it's time for another self-tape evaluation. If you've been listening or watching the patios for any amount of time, you know that giving honest feedback about your video submissions is really making an impact. What's even more exciting is when the actor writes me back to say that their updated audition actually booked them a job. Sometimes making a small technical adjustment or getting feedback with an acting note can make all the difference. Today, we will look at Mr. Richard Sacker audition video. Who knows? You might take away some nugget that'll reshape your auditions and get you into the next best thing. This is Casting Actors Cast, insights for actors from a casting director. It's time for another episode of Casting Actors Cast, insights for actors from a casting director. Here he is, your host, Jeffrey Dreisbach. Well, hello and welcome to today's episode of Casting Actors Cast. How are you? I hope you're well. I'm Jeffrey Dreisbach. Welcome to this really cool edition, I think, because we've got another self-tape evaluation. I can't tell you how amazing it is to get feedback from people who love these self-tape evaluations. The whole idea is that you can get maybe some insights about your own submissions, because as I've said many times, these kinds of auditions, you know, sending in a self-tape based on sides that the casting might send you and then sending your audition video back, that is not going away. Uh, in fact, I predict that this is going to be, you know, with us for a very, very long time. So the more comfortable and confident you are behind the camera, the better off you're going to be with your submissions as well. So we're going to get to Richard's audition in just a minute. But first, this is that moment of the conversation where I get to say thank you so much for tuning in to Casting Actors Cast. We continue to grow the podcast with your help. I am so grateful. By the way, if you check out the website, it's really easy to do. Simply go to castingactorscast, all one word, dot com. And there you're going to find some additional information. You're going to find an area called Jeff's Jots. And that's a place where you can read show notes. You can download the show notes based on every one of the podcasts. You can go back into the archives. I've been doing this for over three years now. I'm getting close to 200 podcasts. So you can get a corresponding show note that can help you out if you haven't done so already. Also, if you fill out that form on the landing page called Dive Into the Talent Pool, it asks for your name and your email address. Plus, there's a place you can leave a comment. You can leave a question, whatever you want. What happens when you fill that out and submit it? It opens up an additional menu of some freebies. One is a book that I wrote on voice work called Conversation Pieces Out of the Studio, the voice of a workshop for professional actors. It's a 100-page PDF that you can download. You can read it on your device or you can print it out, whatever you want. Um, that's there absolutely free. Plus, there's a video, Casting Director Secrets what they don't want you to know. <laughs> but I will tell you in this free, exclusive, private, 20-minute video as well. So the whole point of doing this podcast is to have the participation of like-minded actors who are interested in improving their auditions, improving their careers, and putting yourself in the right place for the next best thing, which is booking the job, which is getting that film, getting a TV series, getting um, a theater gig, whatever you want, that's something that you can really achieve by just simply showing up and participating. Oh, um, listen, this is also a moment for me to say thank you for those of you who've left reviews on iTunes. Wow, thank you so much. I'm so grateful to you. And I invite everybody, if you would, be so kind. Uh, I'm not asking for money. <laughs> I'm just providing this information just because my love of the business. And when I was an actor, this is information that I wish I had had. So if you are getting a lot out of these videos and, and, um, and the podcast, these patios, listen, I hope that you would consider writing a review, sub, uh, giving me a like, perhaps, um, subscribing, you know, there's that. 
So the YouTube videos aren't getting as much attention as I would like them to, so perhaps you might want to check out the YouTube videos as well. I'm doing a simulcast so that I take the video of me doing the podcast as well as the patio, uh, the, the audio portion, and I send that out as well. So you get to see me simultaneously doing these broadcasts. All right. So anyway, let me just tell you that I um, received a letter from uh, Richard Sacker, and we're going to be playing his video in just a moment right after this message. Here's a shout out to my good friends at Actors Connection. Guess what? All of their classes are online. Yeah, you can take all kinds of workshops, intensives, all from industry professionals. So hello to my friends at Actors Connection. You got to check them out. Great. Thank you for that. Um, this is a, a letter I got um, from Mr. Richard Sacker. Thank you very much, Jeffrey. I especially enjoy your cr- critiques of actors' self-tapes. I returned to the industry after many years in another profession, so I'm trying to get a lid on things right now, since it is so different from when I did this back in the 70s. I would appreciate it if you could give me some feedback on this monologue that I've attached. Tom from I Never Sang for My Father. So he's playing the character Tom from I Never Sang for My Father. Whenever you get a chance. Richard Sacker. Thank you so much, Richard. So um, here are the ground rules for reviewing a self-tape. I want you to know that I have not studied the self-tape that you've sent me. I have checked it out just to make sure on the technical side of things it's able to play and people can see it on the uh, YouTube. Um, And only if you're listening um, as a podcast, I still think the feedback that you're hearing might be really useful just in terms of being able to tweak your own submission. So I think it's quite useful. But you might want to consider going to YouTube and uh, perhaps watching Richard's work as well. Um, oh, and by the way, the feedback that I give, I do it, uh, I divide it into two um, sec- sections, equal groups. One is I talk about the technical side of things, and then I talk about the acting side of things. So I really make try my best anyway to make a really clear distinction between those two arenas, if you will, so that you can really kind of take a look at how your technical stuff is working for you, and then we can talk a little bit more about the acting. Finally, before we play Mr. Sacker's uh, video, I want you to know that it's important that if I am saying nice things to the actor, that the actor um, give that equal weight and value to the critique. (laughs) Does that make sense? I don't want you to do what actors like to do, which is, you know, only tell me what I'm doing wrong so I can make it better. You know what? It takes just as much energy on my part to say something uh, of a critique as it does for me to say something that is positive and reinforcing. And I firmly believe that actors need to uh, accept and uh, embrace the positive things as well as those things that might need improvement. I hope that that makes sense. So that's the only other ground rule that I have. You must give equal weight and value to both of those things. All right. Hope that makes sense. Without further ado, let me go ahead and play uh, Richard Sacker's audition video. Here we go. Hi, Richard Sacker. What do you mean? You want to hire a full-time housekeeper for me? I've hired and fired thousands of people in my day. I don't need anyone getting someone for me. Since I was seven years old, I've taken care of myself. At an age when you were swinging on those trees out there, breaking all those branches, I was selling newspapers five hours a day. And at night, dancing a jig in saloons for pennies. And you tell me I can't take care of myself? If I wanted a housekeeper, and I don't, I'll hire one myself. I've hired and fired thousands of people in my day. When I was vice president of Colonial Brass, 50,000 a year, 2,000 people. And you tell me I'm incompetent to hire a housekeeper? How many people have you hired? What do you do? You teach. If that's
that's what you want to do, that's okay. But don't you talk to me about hiring and firing. Huh. There's nothing wrong with my balance, nonsense. I'm perfectly capable of taking care of myself. I took care of myself at seven. I could take care of myself at 70. And that concludes Richard's audition. Wow, thank you so very much, Richard. I, I enjoyed the, the piece very, very much. So let's talk a little bit about some of the technical things. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about the acting. So, uh, you know, I'm grateful that you sent this in and uh, what a delight to be able to see your work. So strictly in technical terms, here's some feedback that I think you hopefully will find useful. One, I believe that you're a little bit too close to the backdrop. And that means that I'm seeing you hitting the backdrop just slightly. And in and of itself, that's not a terrible thing, although it did take me a little bit out of watching you. And don't forget that any of these technical notes that I'm giving you are there to help support me being able to see your excellent acting. So I don't want uh, folks to give equal weight and value to all of these technical notes or freak yourself out because of something technical. I just want you to surround yourself and do the very, very best that you can technically. And in this case, just being that close to the background sort of took me out of watching you. So a little bit too close to the backdrop, I think. Now, before that, I just want to tell you that I would encourage folks to get used to putting in slates at the top of their videos. Uh, generally speaking, slates are really um, uh, an important ingredient to the entire process. I encourage actors to do a separate slate, a separate video slate where you're looking directly into the camera and giving me your name, the name of the project, the name of the character you're playing, and your height. Now you stop recording and you put that slate at the beginning either as a separate video piece, call it slate for I Never Sang for My Father, or you can attach it to the actual audition, but make sure that it's a separate piece of video. I'm a big fan of fading in on a two or three count or a crossfade from the slate, crossfading into the actual audition, that becomes a very professional way of bringing me into the work. So um, I, next time I would love to see you uh, include a slate. And this goes for everybody. If you're going to be submitting a video to me, and I hope you're considering it. I'd like to see the whole piece, including the slate, because I think that's important. All right, so we talked a little bit about the backdrop. Let's talk a little bit about the lighting. Um, I liked the lighting. I thought the lighting was was very, very good. I did feel it was a little harsh on one side, and um, not so much that it was a distraction, but I just want you to be clear that when we have a, a harsh light on you, um, it has kind of a... a um, uh, a dis not, I don't want to say disturbing. That's the wrong word. It just, well, the word is harsh. It just comes across a little bit of a little hard um, and a little too bright. Now, this is a minor note, Richard, because the work is really, really good and the setup is really good. I want you to get a roll of parchment paper. Get the white parchment paper, not the off-white parchment paper, and you want to give a piece of parchment paper over that light so that it becomes a diffused source of light for yourself. It's really inexpensive. It's safe because parchment paper has been treated so that it doesn't discolor because of the heat of the lighting. But it just felt a little harsh. And parchment paper, by the way, is one of those cool ideas that a lot of people don't know about. So I'm happy to share that with you. So the lighting itself, I thought, could have been just a little bit as less harsh. Now, let's talk about the framing of the camera. Generally speaking, especially in um, film and television work, uh, I love to see you from the chest up. It felt as if, even though your eye line was fine, it felt that you were a little too close. And, and this isn't, again, this is a very nuanced note that I'm giving you here. 
Um, but I really felt that if I could see a little more from the chest up with a little bit of headroom, in other words, the space between the top of your head and the top of the frame, I think that that might have been a better setup. Because the camera felt it was a kind of at a, a, a interesting angle, I would love for you to bring in who you're talking to, who you're making reference points to, a little bit closer so that you are less in profile. So that would be the note that I would want to give you technically. Uh, sound was excellent. You did a really good job. I love you have a really interesting vocal quality, which is really attractive and works really well for you. So don't change a thing in terms of your sound. It work, it's working uh, amazingly well. All right, so those are some technical things to take a look at. By the way, as I said earlier, these are not major at all. Uh, visually, it's a very, very um, excellent Excellent choice of audition on the technical side. Now, let's talk about the acting. Boy, first of all, thank you, Richard. It's a superior choice of material. Um, it's an excellent monologue, and you do it really, really well. So here are a couple of suggestions I'd like to make to you. One is keep the focus to just one or two in the room. Now, you might have to split the reality if you've got a room full of people that you're trying to address. I would be very specific in my focus. So I'm looking only at one person and then I'm shifting my focus to the other person. It might be a good idea to shift from one side of the camera to the other side of the camera. When you split it up that way, I get to see more of your face. Make sense? So perhaps one character's here and one character's here. And if you're splitting it, if you're only talking to one person, then keep that focus there. Now, I don't mean not to blink and just simply stare at that other person. You've got to make this a human interaction with the two of you. But um, I wasn't quite as sure about who you were addressing. And I really want you to make strong choices about who you're talking to. I'm um, speaking of strong choices. Um, I, I loved the um, the powerful nature of the writing in this piece, and I thought you delivered the goods in a really good way. So the only suggestion I'm making acting-wise is that I really would like for you, especially early on, to let me see a few more colors and let me see the transition of those colors. For example, uh, we're going from... from confusion, then to anger, then to frustration, then to hurt, then to disgust, and then to sadness. So those are a full range. And when I say gear changes, I mean when you go from one emotional um, arena, one emotional content to the next emotional moment. Seeing the actor transform and give me a change of their gears when they go from one to another becomes really, really interesting. In other words, I want to see you processing this in front of me as you're saying it. So it's it's for their benefit. You want them to hear what you're having to say, but I think that internalized um, array of emotional challenges is something that I really, really would encourage uh, you to continue to play with um, because this is an excellent audition overall. So I think what I've given you just a few slight technical adjustments and, and even a few gear changes thrown in make this an excellent and powerful audition. Now, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm going back now, jumping back into a technical note, but it just it just occurred to me Make sure that you fade in and you fade out at the end of your audition. That helps both your acting, but also technically it does make a significant difference. It brings me into the scene and then it leaves me with that final moment, that final beat. Wow, you're a very talented man and I'm really excited to know about you and your work and that you're entering the business again after a, a period of absence. I, I hear about these, um, I, I hear that scenario, frankly, from actors many, many times and I find it extremely exciting. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Richard Sacker's audition from I Never Sang from My Father. What a wonderful piece of work. And listen, you too can go ahead and you can... Hit me up with an email, castingactresscast, all one word, at gmail.com if you want to submit and get some feedback just like Richard did. 
Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm Jeffrey Dreisbach, and we'll see you on the next episode of Casting Actors Cast. Thanks. Thank you for joining Casting Actors Cast. Please don't forget to review, like, and share Casting Actors Cast wherever you get your patios, podcast videos. Thanks. I'm Megan Grace Martinez. 